Hi everyone, my name is Tildor Mitev and in this short lecture I will discuss an important stage in developing your digital artifacts uh, that is the stage of observing your potential audience or user group. Uh, it's important to note that uh, the lecture follows on from the previous uh, lecture on thinking about and conceptualizing the parameters of your project so in many respects you should be approaching uh, these two lectures uh, on thinking and observing as part of a continuous process i've broken them down for clarity but they are part of a continuous process uh, in conceptualizing and uh, um, initiating the development of your digital artifact all right so to begin with um, i want to make a really important point uh, which is that your, the social utility of your project, that is its usefulness and uh, meaning for a specific group of users, uh, should be uh, uh, a very impor important determinant in uh, how you approach uh, the stage of observation. This is because the problem or opportunity you are trying to address with your project, uh, and there should be a problem and opportunity by all means, emerges from the particular user group that you're creating uh, content for. And what this means is that uh, your project should be rooted in uh, some sort of need or some sort of uh, um, opening um, which is, uh, is real, right? It resides with a real audience, with a real user group. Um, you cannot allow yourself to be operating in a vacuum um, aiming at everybody. Right, um, because obviously then you will not be actually targeting any any specific group of users. You, you will not be creating meaningful content for for anyone in particular. Be very specific about your users. Be very specific about who you are creating content for. Uh, whose needs are you trying to meet? What is the uh, uh, the particular aspect of uh, of your project that? Uh, uh, satisfies uh, social utility right that is why we're pushing you to think in terms of social utility from the very beginning so let's presume you've uh, taken that on board and you've started already the process of uh, thinking about your audience which is the beginning of the process of uh, observing and uh, what is important to realize here is that uh, observing your users before you've started creating content for them uh, allows you to do two things first it gives you insights about who they are um, what they do uh, how they react to various types of uh, existing content right um, what they like what kind of content they like what kind of content they dislike etc etc and from this you should also be able to um, de deduce what their needs are Right. So I'll talk a little bit more about uh, needs and insights down the track. So when you start the process of observation, uh, your aim is to understand your users. And to understand your users, you need to uh, identify their needs. You need to identify uh, things that drive them, common patterns uh, that uh, um, they are attached to or that form their worldview. Um, and while observing your users, you collect those insights and uh, you then leverage them in uh, developing your project, right? So think of uh, uh, this, these two elements of observation, needs and insights, as a, uh, a continuous cycle, if you will. Um, you identify um, something specific, something particular about uh, users, something that they care about, something that they're passionate about something that uh, forms, uh, uh, let's call it a need vector. And then you identify um, all sorts of interesting uh, um, insights about your users that which you can leverage in order to create content meeting their needs vector, right? So these work together in tandem. That being said, how do you go about the process of observation in the context of uh, developing your digital artifact for the uh, subjects in the digital and social media major. First, uh, it's really important to be where your users are. Right? So uh, 
in, in, in terms of the internet, this means that you need to engage with uh, um, the platforms where your potential users frequent. So if you want to create uh, uh, video content, obviously you, you go to the platforms where your users for this kind of content uh, operate. You want to, you're targeting, let's say a gaming audience. You need to be on Twitch. Maybe you need to be on Discord. You need to be on gaming subreddits. Uh, maybe you need to be on Mixer, right? Uh, if you're targeting uh, um, artsy slash uh, craft slash making uh, user groups, you probably need to be on Etsy, maybe you need to be on Pinterest, right? So always think in terms of the specific platforms uh, which your users uh, uh, will be uh, frequenting and you need to be on those platforms as well in order to observe your users, right? In order to gain insights and understand their needs. Second, look for relevant uh, relevant context right so if you let's say if you want to do equestrian videos you are um, you, you want to make videos you're passionate let's say about horse riding and you want to make introductory videos uh, about uh, horse riding you need to understand the context here and you need to find a uh, relevant context which uh, is meaningful to your users what this means in practice using my example is you need to be on uh, for example horse riding subreddits uh, you need to um, uh, look uh, for horse riding Facebook groups, maybe. Uh, you need to do a detailed research where this sort of uh, audiences uh, uh, gather and what is the uh, context in uh, within which they operate. Uh, this, this might be predominantly visual, it might be textual. You need to figure this out. And once you figured this out, then it's important that you try and initiate conversations with your potential users. Uh, ask them questions. That's why forums are great. That's why we always push students to explore uh, places such as Reddit or, or Discord for that matter. Um, try and find uh, a way where you can engage with your potential users um, and simply, again, get uh, gain a deeper understanding of uh, uh, their context, uh, deeper understanding of potential needs. Uh, try and gather as much insights, uh, as many insights as possible. Um, and you can only do that by continuous observation and by initiating conversations, engaging in dialogue with your potential users. Another way of uh, um, engaging um, in, in a sort of uh, um, non-direct dialogue, if you will, with your potential users is to you look for their for, for uh, public conversations they have with each other, right? So look for comment threads um, uh, on topics similar to your project. Look for um, comment threads on subreddits which are similar to um, the area in which you want to work in. Uh, look for um, existing discussions uh, around this topic and trying to gain uh, a deeper understanding uh, of uh, you know, the context and the kind of needs, the kind of uh, um, opinions that users have uh, around the topic that you want to cover. Similarly, uh, focus on issues. Try and identify issues which are relevant to your potential users, right? So uh, you might not be able to address them or be willing to address them at all, but they allow you to paint a detailed picture of high granularity of uh, the kind of users you are targeting, and they allow you to gain a deeper understanding, deeper insight um, into these users. Why do you need that? Because uh, you should be looking for patterns you can identify. So patterns of behavior, patterns of thought, patterns of opinion that your users hold. We always encourage students to organize these uh, patterns into a, a very detailed picture, as detailed as possible for that matter, um, uh, following the starter pack meme, and I'll talk about this in a second. Look for links, associative links between uh, uh, things like fashion, uh, various objects, uh, music, uh, interests, uh, clothing, um, patterns of behavior, patterns of thought, uh, they allow you to populate a detailed frame of reference for your audience using which you can kind of identify uh, opportunities where your content can fit. All right, so presumably you've done all of that. You need to, at this stage, synthesize all your observations. Um, and presumably at this stage you have a detailed set of observations about your users into a few needs you have discovered and a few insights that you find interesting that sort of resonate with those needs. Uh, it's important here to frame the needs as verbs, as things that uh, drive your users, things that uh, they want 
or they do or they aspire towards um, things that are actionable right Be why because they uh, they should naturally lead you into a crystallization of the kind of content you want to be generating same with your insights when you're framing your insights think in terms of uh, actionable discoveries things that you can leverage in your project so uh, this should look something like this uh, your users uh, my, my users need a way to and here comes uh, a set of uh, a need or a set of needs um, and importantly my users or for my users something matters right or, or something is uh, uh, crucial or, or my users care deeply about something or they find something interesting right here um, you list your insights this together should give you an indication of an opening for content creation and that being said uh, you need to also remember that uh, this process is not linear it's not a one-off set of uh, uh, operations it's a cyclical process uh, a loop as it were uh, which uh, operates on uh, on the basis of uh, observation ideation of possible approaches prototyping uh, those ideas testing them in practice with users and then observing their reaction right so it's an element of a continuous cycle a continuous feedback loop uh, and uh, your project should be mirroring that so um, you should be in continuous contact with your users in fact you should be treating each and every piece of content in your uh, in your series of whatever you're making as a way to connect and engage with your with your target audience engage uh, their reaction and feed that reaction into your iterative process again uh, otherwise if you're operating as it were in a vacuum without that feedback loop without that cyclical approach to observing ideating prototyping testing and observing again you are losing the opportunity to engage with your audience you are in effect at the risk of lo uh, losing your audience entirely so this is really important in terms of um, progressing quickly with your project and so far when you think about uh, everything i've covered so far it's it all seems commonsensical it, it all seems easy and straightforward what you need to remember though is that um, in in practice in uh, uh, in real life terms observation is is definitely not easy uh it's definitely not straightforward for a very simple reason we normally filter out most of reality um without actually paying much attention to it right our perception is set in such a way as to uh, filter out everything that we we don't consider immediately important so this is an evolutionary threat is perfectly uh, justified from uh, the perspective of evolutionary biology however uh, it's really important for you as a content creator um, you no know, in fact for any project any creative project which is uh, uh, engaging with an audience to go uh, against uh, uh, the grain here in a way uh, to to really challenge that uh, um, filter and to try and observe for and, and pay attention to all of those uh, elements of reality which we normally take for granted and uh, and simply ignore um, and that's again that's not really not easy at all uh, there is a wonderful quote by McLuhan that I usually uh, use to illustrate this uh, to students this is from his uh, book war and peace in the global village and uh, in which uh, in this quote he says one thing about which fish know exactly nothing is water since they have no anti-environment which would enable them to perceive the element they live in uh, and this serves to capture very well our predicament here as uh, uh, media practitioners because uh, we tend to uh, uh, ignore a large uh, amount of the content we encounter uh, simply because this is the water in which we swim right we uh, we take it for granted we filter it out and uh, uh, you have to uh, force yourself to think uh, differently about uh, your users you have to force yourself to um, exit this uh, in frame of normal content consumption and to uh, um, as it were switch on all the headlights and really try to observe how your potential users engage with all sorts of different content uh, in order to gain a deeper understanding deeper feeling uh, deeper insights uh, about them and the problem here is compounded by the fact that uh, again as McLuhan observes technological platforms technologically created environments uh, as he calls them are uh, symbolic 
right? There's a symbolic is any metaphor there uh, for intents and purposes uh, um, acting as text for us. And uh, what this means in practice is that uh, as they uh, percolate through uh, social reality and uh, they, uh, they become popular and pervasive, they sort of drift into the background, right? So they immediately become very hard to spot. Uh, why? Because we simply filter them out, right? They are pervasive, hence they have lost their novelty and we stop really paying attention to them. Then we stop noticing them at all and then they become invisible. And you can think of it uh, in these terms that, you know, a technology becomes pervasive and then sort of drifts into a background where we, we simply stop seeing it. Just think of electricity and how uh, shockingly novel uh, electricity was in the 19th century and no one no one in their right mind would pay to electri- uh, pay any attention to electricity today right it's completely invisible uh, same with uh, pervasive media uh, same with pervasive memes for that matter um, this is at the root of uh, that saying that I always repeat in classes that the best memes uh, uh, are never funny in fact they're invisible uh, because they become so pervasive uh, that uh, people lose the ability to see them um, unless they try really hard, unless they work hard to uh, reframe their perception into into noticing them. Why is this relevant to observation? Because you need to uh, force yourself to be able to observe the environment of your users, of your audience, and uh, the, the platforms, the media, the memes even, that are pervasive in that environment and that they are that are so pervasive in fact that your users do not see them so at this point the question the, the, the only valid question in fact is all right but how do we, how do we do that how do we do that uh, uh, reframing how do we open up um, this uh, um, invisible uh, frames to, to to be noticed to be seen and uh, the thing is that you can make the invisible visible through reframing um, and it's sort of a, a closed circle here. You need to be paying a very detailed uh, um, uh, attention to the environment in which your users uh, and your audience operates. You need to map it um, in, in uh, uh, as detailed a way as possible. And we already mentioned that. And once you've done that, you then can start uh, experimenting with adding content to that frame, adding uh, um, different objects and, and seeing how things change when you do that, right? So this is what we call reframing. And in the following few uh, slides, I'll actually discuss uh, how um, framing and reframing works very briefly, of course, but uh, I will try and give you a perspective on how you can approach this for your own project. So first of all, reframing, let's try and get an understanding of reframing. So what I've given you here is a quote by um, Edelman, who is one of the uh, uh, main theories behind this concept of uh, framing. And notice what he says here about uh, uh, framing and reframing. The character causes and consequences of any phenomenon become radically different as changes are made in what is prominently displayed, what is repressed, and especially in how observations are classified. So remember, notice how he's talking about perception and the way observations are classified. So this is a key um, moment here that I will return to down the track in this lecture. The social world is a kaleidoscope of potential realities, any of which can be readily evoked by altering the ways in which observations are framed and categorized. Right. So a reality which is invisible uh, because it's so, so pervasive uh, can be changed by altering the way in which uh, observations are framed. Right. So this is what this is the power of reframing. Uh, and you have that power as a media maker, as a, a media creator. This is one of the great uh, and terrible powers, in fact, of, uh, of media in general. And uh, the powers that um, everyone has in their uh, at their fingertips when it comes to uh, content generation and to media making in general. Now, to add a little bit more detail to this picture, we need a, a sort of a, a simplified understanding of uh, what frames are. And uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail here. Uh, we are covering this content extensively in uh, uh, other subjects. Um, but for our intents and purposes in this lecture, and for in, if in the context of uh, digital artifact development, you need to remember that uh, frames are how we perceive reality. 
Uh, and uh, a frame is a central organizing principle. It's an idea or a story that uh, simplifies the volume and complexity of information to which uh, um, an observer is exposed. Uh, it classifies this perceived reality through selection and salience and therefore provides meaning. So what, what does selection and salience mean? It means that uh, you select certain elements of, uh, uh, of a reality which uh, stand out or that you want to, uh, stand, to make stand, uh, stand out and then you make them salient, you make them uh, uh, stand out among the rest. And uh, when you generate a frame in this way, you provide certain meaning. Right, you, you you literally generate a certain reality. This can be changed by rearranging what is uh, what is made salient. Right, you're rearranging the selection. Where this leads is to an understanding about patterns of relationships. And you remember how I asked you to think about uh, your audience's uh, um, perceived needs and perceived uh, uh, and your insights about uh, uh, your audience in terms of patterns. Uh, think in terms of patterns of associations, patterns of uh, relationships between elements of reality. You know, these can be objects, feelings, entities, in fact, any other phenomena which uh, um, appear and operate within the context of your users' uh, daily activities, in, in, in within the context of who they are, what they do, what they want, right? Patterns of relationships, remember that. So this is where this concept of starter packs comes. If you are of a certain age group, you are all familiar with uh, um, what uh, the, the concept of starter packs stands for. It's a, it's a, it's a meme, uh, but it's a fantastic illustration of this idea of frames and uh, reframe, the practice of reframing, of changing the perception of reality uh, by changing patterns of relationships and associations. And you can change those by adding or removing objects from the frame. So. Um, here is an example of a starter pack. This is a, a ULW starter pack, and this should be uh, instantly familiar to uh, anyone studying at the University of Wollongong. Here is another starter pack. Uh, this one is I'm a traveler, not a tourist one. Again, this should be instantly recognizable. Notice that in all of these cases, you have a variety of elements uh, forming patterns of relationships which illustrate a specific uh, user group, a specific audience, right? Uh, Keep in mind, uh, when we're asking you to think in terms of starter packs, we're not asking you to make f a fun of or denigrate or in any other way uh, uh, position in a, in, a, in a pejorative or a bad way your users or, or audience. Uh, quite the contrary, we want you to try and to, to gain as detailed uh, understanding of the patterns of associations that frame the worldview and the perception of your audience as possible, right? Their, co their social context, as it were. Hence why we're asking you to populate a starter pack with uh, all of these elements. So this can be objects, this can be actions, this can be emotions, this can be experiences, uh, this can be uh, uh, common phrases even, right? So uh, when you see them all, you realize that there is a certain uh, detailed frame that is associated with this user group. And we want you to, when you're thinking and observing, um, thinking about your project and observing your uh, your users in your audience, we want you to think in these terms, try and generate a starter pack like that. Um, in fact, I highly recommend you, uh, um, after you finish watching this lecture, you, you try and do that. First, make a starter pack of your prospective audience. These, this, uh, this starter pack will change, of course, as you gain more insights and you identify more needs, um, as you gain a, more understand, a deeper understanding of the context of your uh, users, uh, your starter pack will become more detailed. In, uh, at all times, though, you need to be uh, uh, looking for patterns. Uh, be as detailed as possible in your observations. So make a starter pack of your prospective audience. And then after you've done that, uh, make another one positioning your digital artifact for your prospective audience, right? Uh, how you imagine your project is positioned um, in terms of your audience. And it should resonate with the existing frame, with the, the frame that you, you first identified. Uh, when it comes to your starter packs, also think in terms of um, gaining actionable insights, right? So a reminder, your insight should be uh, leading you into um, an opening 
for for your project an opening into something that you can actually make all right uh, this is it uh, from me when it comes to the stage of uh, observation thank you all for listening as usual if you have any questions hit me up on twitter at ted thank you and see you online